in chapter 11, we were discussing the worksheet that goes with a merchandising business. We have a brand new account, well, a couple brand new accounts, merchandise and inventory, and then our account purchases. Purchases is what kind of an account, how's its, what's its category? Cost. Cost. And then we had two contra cost accounts that went with the purchases. What were they? The contra cost. What affects that purchases account? Purchases, returns, purchases and returns and allowances sales. and sales return to not sales. Purchases, purchases discount. The, per, the contra cost accounts that go with purchases have that word purchases in them. Purchases, returns, and allowances, and purchases discount. Let me make that just a little bit bigger. Merchandise inventory is what kind of an account? It's an asset. It's going to keep track of the items that we have for sale to our customers, merchandise inventory. If we were using a perpetual inventory, when we purchase something to sell to our customers, we would put it directly into merchandise inventory. Our book, with this latest edition, 12, we're using the periodic inventory. So when we purchase something to sell to our customers, we're putting it into the account purchases. And then at the end of the fiscal period, we're going to make an adjustment to the merchandise inventory. That's where the worksheet comes into place. Because we're making those same adjustments that, adjustments that we did for supplies on hand, prepaid, insurance, um, what else do we have? Salaries, accrued, the same adjusting entries that we've had in the past, but we're going to add that adjustment to the merchandise inventory. It makes the worksheet um, just a little busier than what we've had in the past. And the demo that we did the other day, they gave us very small numbers for us to work with. But when you look at the merchandise inventory, this one might be better. It just has the adjustments on it. When we look at the merchandise inventory adjustment, it takes two adjustments to, to bring the merchandise inventory up to date. And we adjust it with the account that's called Income Summary. So we're going to use that account again. Remember, we used Income Summary when we closed our accounts at the end of the fiscal period in that chapter. So when we're making the adjustment for the merchandise inventory, we have two adjustments. Here's the A, and that is to remove the beginning merchandise inventory. Here's our A credit, and here's our A debit with income summary. With the second adjustment, the B, we're going to put in the ending merchandise inventory. And that's the representation here of the nine. Where did we get those numbers? They had to give them to us, didn't they? Because we don't have any way of calculating that. But to get to this number in real life, we'd have to do a physical count of what merchandise we have left that's available for sale. That ending merchandise inventory becomes the beginning merchandise inventory for the next fiscal period. The nine is what we have left. So it's going to be on the debit side just like this one was because this one's going to get carried over to our other financial statements as we work across this way. So we have the A, A, B, B. 
And remember I told you in some of the examples in the book, the A and the B are reversed. I just like the A to be the first one that you're taking off the beginning merchandise inventory. Would it be wrong if you reverse those? The letters, not the numbers, but the letters. No, it wouldn't be wrong. I just think it's a little easier to keep track of that adjustment if you'll make the A the one that removes that beginning merchandise inventory. So when we carry the numbers over to the adjusted trial balance, okay, the adjusted trial balance, we're only carrying over, do I have it large enough there? Carrying over the ending merchandise inventory on the adjusted trial balance. But when we get down to the income summary, we need to bring both of those numbers over. From the adjusted trial balance, then we're just going to do what we did before with the, the worksheet. Carry it over to the income statement, carry it over to the balance sheet. What accounts go on the income statement? What's the mnemonic that I gave you? Nice. Income, cost, cost, and expense. And now we have some cost accounts. The cost accounts are going to be, what are they? There's three of them. Purchases. Purchases. Purchases discount. And purchases, returns, and allowances. Okay, so we have three right now. We also have freight in if we have a freight. Okay, that's also going to be carried over into that cost. From the adjusted trial balance, oh, I forgot to ask you what is the mnemonic for the balance sheet? Out. The out. And that's what our completed worksheet would look like. And when you're working on that in Chapter 12, especially when we take the test on Chapter 11 and 12, which will be our final, write that mnemonic up there so that those are the only accounts that you bring over to those financial statements on the worksheet. The last part of the worksheet is the ruling at the bottom. Single line tells us that we added or subtracted. Remember, we always want to add this number whether it's on the outside two columns or the inside two columns. If you couldn't see this right here, but you could only see the numbers, would we know if that's a net income or a net loss? A net loss, inside two columns. We want it to be very small if it's a loss. Net income, outside two columns, we want it to be a little bigger. Now on the test, when I ask you the question, and I want you to look at it, here's the income statement, here's the balance sheet. If I say for the net loss or net income, you have a credit on the income statement and a debit on the balance sheet, would that be a net income or a net loss? Net loss. That's how the question will be worded not if it's on the inside two columns or the outside two columns. Okay, it's not going to be worded that way. So if I, add, if I said it's going to be on the debit side of the income statement and the credit side of the balance sheet, would we have a net income or a net loss? Income. A net income. Also, when you look at the, merch, at the uh, income summary, if I ask you, and I have to think about how it's worded on the test, um, if I just give you income summary and I have a number here and a number here, and I asked you to tell me the beginning merchandise inventory, which number would that be? One on the left the 13, because that was the first transaction that we did to remove the beginning merchandise inventory. And then if I asked you what the ending merchandise inventory would be, and we don't have the rest of this, we only have the income summary, could you tell me which was the beginning? You might have to draw the picture of the adjustment 
to answer that question. But when you're taking the test, I try not to have the questions confusing or tricky, but I also want you to think about what it is that I'm asking. Don't just assume that the first one that you come to that seems like it could be the correct answer is the correct answer. Look at all of the answers okay, before you make that choice. You might have to draw out the T account. You might have to actually write out those two adjustments, A and B, to answer that question. Joe, do you have a question? The income statement on that one, so that's a net, that's an income, not a loss, right? No, we had a net loss. That's, so that net Inside two columns. Okay, so the income statement being that it's on the right side, the 18, is that an 18? Well, that was only, oh, for this? Yes. Because that 18 is on the right side of the credit, because it's on the smaller side. That on the worksheet, I would just picture inside two columns net loss, outside two columns net income. How do we want the net loss to be? Small as We possible. want it to be small. We can run a business with a net loss for a while. We can't run it as a net loss forever. So I think that's the easiest way. And if you can remember, the income statement is the first two. The balance sheet is the last two columns. What order do we prepare the financial statements in? What's the first one that we have to do? Now that goes back several chapters, but that's on the final exam. Which financial statement do we do first? The income statement. The income statement. Why? Because we need to know the income. We have to know what the net income or the net loss is. Then what do we prepare? The statement of owner's equity. And then we can prepare the balance sheet. So it's in the same order here. Income statement, balance sheet. Remember, this is what some people call just a scrap scratch paper, scrap paper. It's not an official document, but can't we do everything we need to do on this to get ready to prepare uh, the financial statements, the official financial statements? We do. All of the information that we need, the whole picture of what happened to that business during that fiscal period is right here, isn't it? It showed us what our net income is whether we had a net loss. It shows us our beginning merchandise inventory. It shows us what the owner took out as a withdrawal. It's, it's a picture of everything that happened within that business all put together, but it's not a formal statement. This is an in-house document. Now, I keep saying we're learning a little bit about a lot of things in accounting We've only scraped the surface just a little bit on accounting. There are other statements that you're going to be preparing. You're going to have a cash flow. I mean, you're just, you're going to have more documents that you prepare, but you have a very strong foundation of what's happening with accounting. You also know some of the terminology. Are you ready to take the CPA exam yet? <laughs> Not yet, right? <clears throat> we still have a lot to do. Payroll, there'll be some questions on the final exam about payroll, and I have already put the final exam review up there as a video. It's in Canvas if you want to start looking at it, just to see if you have any questions that you need to ask before we start reviewing <coughs> for that. Callahan will give you a good review of, of what you're going to see on the exam. Do we have any questions about chapter 11, what we did in 11? I think it's kind of an easy chapter. We will not have an official chapter test on 11 and 12. It will just be part of the final exam. Our test on Tuesday will be on 9 and 10, and we'll do that review in just a minute. But you'll have a lot of questions from chapters 11 and 12, just because we haven't had that um, a 
a chapter test on that. All right, if we don't have any questions, I'm going to stop this.